Well, joining us now are the Shadow Foreign Secretary uh, for Labour, Hilary Benn, and Sir Julian Priestley, uh, Secretary General of the European Parliament between 1997 and 2007. He uh, joins us on the line. Uh, Hilary Benn, we've now got this referendum bill published by the government. Does Labour have any problems with it? Well, we're going to vote for the bill when it's debated in the House of Commons. Circumstances have changed. There is now going to be a referendum. We need to get on and have the debate in this country about our future place in Europe. And we'll be arguing very strongly in that referendum because of jobs and investment and security and Britain's influence in the world that Britain should remain a member of the European Union. But the decision is now going to be made by the British people. Sir Julian, how does the fact that a referendum is going to happen change uh, the bargaining positions, I suppose we have to call it now, of uh, the other members of the EU? Well, first of all, I mean, I think that uh, it was uh, widely assumed that there was a strong chance of having a referendum, even before the election. Secondly, I think that what people are really interested in is to know precisely what sort of changes that the government is, re is looking for in detail. Is the government prepared to work constructively with the 27 other member states whose agreement would be required for any changes that are made? They'll be interested to see how realistic some of the proposals are. And they'll also want to know that if, if the government is successful in getting some of its aims through, will the government under David Cameron really campaign strongly for Britain to remain within the European Union? How many members of the European Union are there other than Britain who might think it's in their interests actually to see the back of the troublesome Brits? I think a lot of people get irritated from time to time with the Brits, but actually uh, the, the vast majority of member states, and I can't think of a single member state which actively wants Britain to leave. The question is how far would they be prepared to go to meet Britain's concerns? And also, what precisely are the changes that Britain is seeking? Are they seeking to change completely the nature of the European Union? Do they accept that actually treaty change is a very cumbersome and difficult mechanism for achieving change within the European Union? Are they prepared to work for compromise? And then are they prepared to back up what they have negotiated? I mean, Henry Bell, as I understand it, Labour doesn't only back now the idea of a referendum, it also backs the need for change. What are the changes you want to see? Yes, we do think that there needs to be change, and it's a view shared by a number of other European countries. Look, the world changes, and the European Union needs to change as a result. We are looking for things like benefits, people having to contribute first before they take out, uh, longer transitional controls if there's any further enlargement of the European Union. We've proposed the red card system which would build on the yellow card that we helped to negotiate when we were in government so that if a, a number of national parliaments said well we don't like this proposal then it would be taken off the table. But the point about reform in, in Europe and I think Julian makes a very important point is that it's not about what one government asks for at one moment in time backed up by a referendum. Don't forget, David Cameron didn't originally want this referendum. He only decided to go for it to deal with the problems he's got in the Conservative Party. It is very reminiscent of 40 years ago when Harold Wilson did exactly the same, when Labour was in government then and we had the first referendum. Think of the mo one of the most significant changes we've seen in Europe over the last 30 years, the decline in the proportion of the budget spent on the common agricultural policy from what over 70% to around 30% now. That shows that very significant change is possible in Europe, but to do it you have to make the argument, win friends, influence, and that's exactly what the Prime Minister is going to be discovering on his tour around the capitals of Europe. Well, Sir Julian, there could be some potential advantages in voting no, couldn't there, and actually coming out of the European Union? Well, that isn't the view of the vast majority of people in business. It isn't the view of major, uh, the vast majority of people in trade unions or in, in associations, etc. It is the view of a vocal, currently a minority. But they haven't actually stipulated an alternative plan, an alternative model, which really works. And the idea that you can be a part of the internal market, accept all the rules, but forfeit the right to change the rules of the internal market seems to me to be curious politics. But we know now that this issue, and one of the differences from the 70s, is it's closely connected to migration, the number of people in this country, and it seems impossible to actually change uh, migration by European people here without uh, coming out of the EU, isn't it? Well, as far as any future migration is concerned, the longer transitional controls... But in, in the end, it happens. 
Well, it, in, in, it depends on which countries we're talking about and the basis on which they were admitted. Because an individual member state could say, well, we won't agree to that further member state coming in unless we can determine the length of the transitional controls, frankly, for as long as we like. So that, that is one option that is available to member states currently in those negotiations in the future. I think the issue in Britain is that, look, we know that migration has been good overall, economically. The migrants make an, a net contribution. They're paying taxes that are helping to pay for the health service. Some of them are working in the health service and, and doing operations and providing very important sources of labor. But the, the benefits have not been shared equally. People are concerned about depression of some wage rates. There's, I see with interest, the government has adopted one of our proposals that they're going to make it illegal for employment agencies mm -hmm. to advertise exclusively in other European countries. That's not right, it's, and that's why we said it should change. Um, and it's about dealing with those concerns that people have got. Okay, we're gonna have to leave it there. Thank you both very much.